Hello, my name is Michael Rick, and I'll be teaching you a course in data structures and algorithmic analysis. Uh, I'm going to adopt some notation here that is not standard at all, but I, nevertheless, I use it in my discussion of uh, complexity analysis. So I'm going to let script f denote the set of all functions that are of the type we just described a moment ago in the previous set of slides. In other words, um, these are functions from real numbers to real numbers that are eventually positive and eventually non-decreasing. Okay? If you can think of any such function, then the function is a member of the set script f. Now, this idea of having a set of functions, this might be new to you, might seem strange and unusual, but it's actually extremely commonplace and extremely practical. Uh, it's used all throughout mathematics. Okay? So here are some examples of functions that belong to this set. Uh, we include positive constant functions. Okay, if we have a function that's positive and constant, such as f of x equals 5, well, it's eventually positive. In fact, it's always positive, And it's eventually non-decreasing. In fact, it's always non-decreasing. It's constant. OK? Um, other examples include, another example would be a polynomial function whose leading coefficient is positive. As long as the leading coefficient is pos positive, it doesn't matter if this function goes up and down and is sometimes positive and sometimes negative, eventually, as the input gets big enough, it will be guaranteed to be positive. Okay? If x is big enough, it'd be guaranteed that f of x is positive if you're dealing with such a polynomial function. Okay? And, and eventually, it will also be non-decreasing. In fact, increasing. Okay, exponential functions whose base exceeds 1. Let me remind you that if you have a, a base of an exponential function, in other words, something like b to the x power, b to the x power, um, if b is a positive constant greater than 1, then b to the x power increases, right? It's positive and it increases. And... And, 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 of course, it, it, it demonstrates exponential growth. Okay? Similarly, if you have a logarithmic function whose base is greater than 1, then that is also an increasing function. Okay? Um, log to the base 2, for example, is an increasing function. These are just a few examples of the type of functions that we want to include in this set, script f. Now, it's worth noting that script f is closed under addition. What do I mean by that? Well, I simply mean that if you take two functions, f and g, that both belong to script f, and you add those functions, f and g, together to get f plus g, well, that function is also in script f. Similarly, if you multiply two such functions, it's in script f. So f times g. What do I mean by f g? Well, you know, f is really f of x and g is really g of x, and f g really means f of x times g of x. All of that algebra stuff that you, you should be familiar with that. Okay. Um, so what I'm saying, I think, now is that this notation big O that you've learned, you've encountered previously in other courses and elsewhere, um, <clears throat> probably uh, in a somewhat casual way. Well, now we've come to the point where we're not going to be casual about it at all anymore. We're going to be uh, quite rigorous. And we'll use... Okay, here goes. Suppose you have a function little f, and it's an element of the set of functions script f that we just discussed. Okay? And by definition, 
what I mean by big O parentheses F parentheses is I mean a certain subset of script F, a subset of script F, namely the subset consisting of those functions little g from script F such that there exists a real number x naught and a positive number c so that every number x bigger than x naught little g of x is less than or equal to capital C times little f of x. That is quite a mouthful. I realize how awe-inspiring that is. But here's what it means at a gut level. Capital O of F simply consists of all the functions little g from script F that are eventually bounded above by a constant multiplied by the function F. Okay? Here's an example. Um, Suppose f of x is equal to x cubed. Well, that defines an increasing function that's eventually positive. So certainly this little f belongs to our set script f. Okay? All right. Suppose little g is the function defined by g of x equals 100 times x squared. Then I claim that little g is an element of big O f. How do I know that? Okay, because I claim that eventually little g of x is bounded, is less than or equal to a constant title f of x. And here's my demonstration of that fact. By eventually, I'm going to mean as long as x is bigger than 1. So I'm choosing x not to be 1. Okay? I'm choosing my constant capital C to be 100. And if I do so, which I'm allowed to do, I'm allowed to choose those numbers. They fit uh, the requirements. <clears throat> then simply notice that little g of x is equal to 100 times x squared which is less than or equal to 100 times x cubed. Now remember that I'm talking about x being bigger than 1. What I just said is not true for any old x, but as long as x is bigger than 1, it is true that 100 times x squared is less than or equal to 100 times x cubed. And that, in turn, is equal to capital C times f of x. All right? So I've just demonstrated that little g of x is less than or equal to capital C of f of x provided we keep x bigger than 1. The next bullet, the next couple bullets, I guess, to be quite honest, is it's a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit awkward to talk about. Um, after, you know, after just swallowing a rather technical, very precise, set theoretic based definition for big O of F, we're now going to um, start using the notation in a traditional way, which is a little bit sloppy, arguably. Um, in any case, let's begin with something precise. Um, okay, so if we write little g is an element of capital O of F, that makes perfectly good sense because we just got done saying that capital O parentheses F parentheses represents a certain set. And so we're just saying here that little g is an element of that set. Little g is one of the functions in big O parentheses f. And that's fine. But the problem is, traditionally people write g is equal to big O of f instead of saying g is an element of big O of f. And we pretty much have to get used to it. Um, in this way, people are using the notation O of F not really to represent that entire set of functions, but to basically represent some generic uh, element of that set, some function in that set. Okay? So when you write G equals big O of F, you know, you're saying G is, an, is, is one of the functions in big O of F. 
And it's just the way it is. It's, it's the way people have been writing for well over 100 years, and you've probably encountered that notation in a previous course. Okay. It's also very common to um, express a function using a formula for that function, such as x squared. Okay? If I say the function x squared, everybody knows what I mean. I mean the function that you, you input a real number x and out comes, f, uh, out comes x squared. In other words, f of x is equal to x squared. Okay, so we do, we do uh, uh, use formulas instead of function names quite often when using the big O notation. So we can write things like this. 100 x squared is equal to big O x cubed. All right? Now, I'm going to tell you why that is a correct statement. Okay? It's a correct statement because among functions that are eventually bounded by a constant times x cubed, one of those functions is the function 100 x squared. All right? Um, after all, I'm allowed to choose the constant. So if I let the constant be 100, then certainly 100 times x squared is less than 100 times x cubed. Well, be careful. That's not true for every value of x. But that is true for every value of x bigger than 1. As long as x is big enough, as long as x is bigger than 1, 100x squared is, is less than 100x cubed. Therefore, it's true that 100x squared is an element of that set big O of x cubed, but in this sloppy way, we say that 100x squared is equal to big O x cubed. There's a phrase in mathematics, um, there's a phrase, abusive notation, that at least some mathematicians like to, to use as a, as a way of acknowledging that, that, that sometimes notation is used in contradictory or conflicting, at least conflicting ways. So that is absolutely the case with O of F. As we discussed, big O of F is used uh, as notation to specify a certain set of functions. But the truth is, it's more commonly used to mean some generic function in that set, okay? Some actual function, but unspecified function from that set of functions. So here's an example of what I mean. If you write down 7x to the fifth plus big O of x squared, what you're really trying to say is, Here's a function that you obtain by taking the function 7x to the fifth and adding to it some function from the set big O of x squared. Okay? We don't really care which function it is in big O of x squared. Okay? Either it's generic or it's some particular function, but we don't know which one and we don't care. Uh-huh. And uh, in any case, we obtain a function that is um, not completely specified, but nevertheless communicates uh, a sense of what that function is, or at least how it behaves when x gets big. Okay, here's some stuff you can check. I'm thinking that you can check this on your own, but let me discuss it a little bit anyway. All right, this is a correct statement. One million is equal to big O one. All right, well, saying that the function, a function is equal to big O one is simply saying that eventually that function is bounded by a constant times one. Well, a constant times one is a constant. So we're saying here that the constant function one million is bounded by a constant. And, and that, of course, is true. A million is less than or equal to a million. So that's easily the case. Um, 
a little less obvious, 55 times the natural log of x is equal to big O of x. All right, what this really means is 55 times the natural log of x is less than a constant times x as long as x is big enough. This third one is really saying that 10 times x cubed is less than a constant times 2 to the x as long as x is big enough. Both the base 2 exponential function and the base 2 logarithmic function uh, occur you know, over and over and over again in computer science. And, and you've seen this by now, although usually you, know, you see the letter n used instead of x. So you see 2 to the n for the base 2 exponential function and log to the base 2 of n. Um, and, and you're familiar with, with, the, with the truth of that uh, fact that these occur quite often. Well, somebody a while ago decided that log to the base 2 occurs so often that they decided to give it a shorter name. So for quite a while, a couple decades anyway, it's become fairly standard to write LG, uh, LG for base 2 logarithm. All right, now, suppose you have real numbers P, A, and B, and P is positive, A is greater than 1, and B is greater than 1. Then it makes sense to talk about and compare uh, the following three functions. X to the pth power, log to the base A of X, and b to the x power. All three of these functions are increasing. They all belong to the set script f, in fact. And here's some rather important facts um, about comparing these functions. Okay, log to the base a of x is big O of x to the p. Log to the base a of x is big O of b to the x x to the p is big O of b to the x. Um, well, it says on the next slide that x to the p is called a power function, and you probably know that already. Log to the base a of x is a log function, and b to the x is an exponential function. And so basically, the important thing to realize here is that that anytime you have you're dealing with increasing functions, um, a logarithmic function is always big O of a power function, and a logarithmic function is always big O of an exponential function, and a power function that's always big O of an exponential. Function. So as I said, x to the p is called a power function. Now, summing that up, actually, um, it's a fact, and it's not terribly hard to prove, and, and we probably should prove it, but won't. Um, the facts are that logarithmic functions eventually grow slower than power functions, and power functions eventually grow slower than exponential functions.